rotating full screen sir uh, full screen visible now no sir not yet. not visible okay again no, i visible so full screen is not visible okay okay i am uh, stopping the sharing and again Now is it visible? Yes, sir. It is in full screen, sir. Full, full screen. Full yeah, screen. please, sir. Uh, so, uh, good afternoon, uh, good evening, all the participants. So, welcome back again. Uh, uh, today, we are going to discuss about, uh, uh, we have already discussed about how to prepare different concoctions for pest and disease management in organic as well as in natural farming. So today uh, we will be discussing about uh, some of the basic principles of uh, pest and disease management under in, uh, organic crop production. So earlier we have discussed about uh, preparation of uh, so many uh, organic herbal as well as biocontrol preparations which are generally used to control pest and disease in organic farming. Uh, as you all know, uh, that uh, uh, in organic farming and that nitrogen and pest management are very critical problems uh, and in absence of synthetic pesticides uh, we are having the binding of uh, using only non-chemical approaches for pest and uh, disease management and uh, we have to strictly follow the national standards of organic farming. Otherwise, there will be problem of certification and ultimately our produce, we will be unable to sell our produce into the market. So uh, here uh, in absence of uh, uh, that uh, synthetic pesticides, only non-chemical approaches are uh, uh, given more emphasis. And uh, uh, these ecological approaches we generally increase and enhance biological cycles within the farming system. Uh, what are those biological cycles? Uh, means uh, regulation of uh, pest uh, control, enhance enhancement of uh, that uh, natural enemy. There are so many predator, parasite, parasitoids of important insect pest of the crop. There are so many biological control agents, fungal biogen, bacterial biogen, viral biogens, which are generally present in our uh, agroecology. So we have to manipulate or we have to modify our whole agro uh, ecosystem in a way uh, uh, that uh, encourages uh, the population and multiplication of all those natural enemies which are important uh, to control different kind of pests and diseases in our uh, agro ecosystem. Increased biodiversity of flora, Actually, the diversity of natural enemy depends upon uh, the diversity of flora which we are having at our organic farm. So uh, we have to increase the uh, di diversity of those flora which generally harbor the uh, natural enemy. Uh, those natural enemy may be the predators, may be the parasite, may be the parasitoids of uh, uh, some insect pest, important insect pest. Can anyone uh, tell about predators, parasites, and parasitoids? Uh, participant, please respond. Parasitoid is uh, the one which completes one of its life stage in the host. Okay, very good. And what about predator and parasite? Parasite, uh, it, uh, it um, causes disease. G, 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 G. And uh, predator? Predator is it itself preys on the host and kills instantly. G, G, G. Very good. So predator is just like lion, which is yeah. bigger than uh, size of its host. And uh, a predator needs so many hosts to complete its life cycle. Whereas parasite is smaller than its host, 
and generally uh, they may be externally or internal parasite uh, but they completes their life cycle and many host but parasitoids they are those type of uh, parasite which generally complete their whole life cycle within a same host so this is the difference between para uh, uh, parasite predator and parasitoid so predator is generally bigger than uh, the size of host Uh, while parasitoid and parasites they are smaller than their host uh, but uh, those parasites which completes their whole life cycle within a single host they are known as parasitoid so uh, if you uh, study the biological control of insect pest so you will find lot of uh, different kind of parasitoids maybe ek parasitoid there is a common uh, that uh, trichogramma uh, which is used in the form of trichot card to control many lepidoran uh, lepidotran pest in case of rice and sugar cane uh, that is common ek parasitoid so uh, parasitoid may be egg one uh, parasitoid may be larval parasitoid may be uh, nymphal parasitoid may be Uh, pupal parasitoid so according to the stage of uh, insect which is uh, infected by the parasite uh, parasitoid uh, categorized or classified in those category so we have to enhance uh, uh, the population of uh, these kind of natural enemy uh, of the insect pest uh, by manipulation of our whole agro ecosystem and uh, uh, ecological approaches which uh, enhance the internal resistance of crop plant to pest can anyone uh, tell that uh, all kind of susceptible variety uh, whether uh, uh, do they have uh, some resistance inside them or they are totally devoid of resistance please respond uh, there are two type of crop variety one is resistant one is susceptible resistant uh, resist the Uh, occurrence of disease while uh, susceptible variety uh, cannot uh, resist the uh, attack of disease so uh, if your variety is susceptible it doesn't means that uh, it uh, do not have any resistance inside it there are resistance gene but due to its uh, susceptible uh, that uh, suppressive condition suppressive genes Uh, those resistant genes are not expressed in susceptible variety so if you will manipulate uh, uh, the your agro ecosystem whole environment and if you will uh, apply different kind of bio agents particularly trichoderma and bacterial bio agents uh, many of them uh, induces they in, uh, induce the in built resistance of plants even in case of susceptible variety and those susceptible variety we have like resistance if you will apply bio control agent so not all bio control agent but many of the bio control agent if uh, applied in organic farming uh, your resist uh, susceptible variety may be have like resistance one so uh, uh, if you will uh, uh, apply the ecological approach Uh, you will be able to enhance the inbuilt resistance of the uh, your crop plants so making soil suppressive to soil borne pest and diseases it is very important because you know uh, many of our uh, crop diseases and many of the uh, insects and many of our uh, uh, crop weeds uh, they complete their whole life cycle within the soil and many of the insect stages are uh, mainly the soil borne so if you will make your soil suppressive by uh, manipulating the uh, uh, environment of soil or by adding some soil amendment or by using bio control agents your soil will become suppressive and in those suppressive soil Uh, many of the soil borne diseases or seed borne diseases uh, they will not attack your they will be unable to attack your crop plants so manipulation of soil environment as well as whole agro ecosystem is a very good agro ecological approach to control pest and diseases in organic crop production so uh, many a times uh now uh, uh, started uh, we have already discussed uh, in case of uh, integrated pest management uh, in organic farming preventive measures are given more emphasis 
why uh, because uh, uh, we do not have silver bullet solution like uh, synthetic chemical pesticides uh, in case of organic farming they are totally prohibited so uh, we do not have to wait for uh, attack of any kind of pest or disease in uh, our crops uh, so we have to uh, uh, employ all preventive measures right from beginning of the sowing or crop planning up to the harvesting of the crop uh, so uh, it will resist or it will prevent the attack of uh, any kind of pest and disease in our organic uh, crops so increased biodiversity uh, in every uh, uh, system of organic farming whether it is natural farming or it is organic farming increased biodiversity of crop is given more emphasis why increased biodiversity because if you are having uh, uh, so many of crops suppose one uh, crop is uh, uh, subjected to loss by a particular uh, disease or pest uh, your uh, uh, remaining crop will be safe from that particular pest because all pest and disease uh, they cannot attack all the crops so if you will uh, and it is generally recommended that at a time you must have at least 10 different kind of crops at your organic farm so uh, only 10 percent uh, suppose one crop is subjected to a loss uh, due to epidemic uh, of some insect pest or disease so only 10 percent loss will, will be there uh, you will uh, your crop uh, will be overall uh, farm will be 90 percent safe from the attack of uh, a particular pest and disease and side by side clean cultivation clean cultivation means removal and destruction of all kind of weeds which have both different kind of pest and diseases which uh, uh, help in transmission of several virus diseases in our crops and destruction of all the uh, crop residue which is infested or infected by a particular disease or by a particular insect pest uh, that comes under clean, clean cultivation if you will destroy uh, the stubbles uh, which are infested with disease parts or uh, stages of insects, uh, they will check the life cycle of different kind of pest and pathogens in your crop production system. So cultural management, in absence of chemical pesticides, cultural management options are uh, uh, very, uh, 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 very important uh, and uh, uh, these includes uh, the choice of variety, sowing time, uh, sowing distance, uh, irrigation management, nutrient management, uh, that uh, space management, weed management, every cultural practice which is uh, being employed uh, for successful production of crop, uh, many of them uh, can also be uh, manipulated uh, in order to uh, break the life cycle of pest and diseases at your organic farm. So if you will clearly know the life cycle of any pest and diseases, accordingly you can modify uh, your sowing time or sowing method or irrigation method or nutrient pest man management method. And in that way, you can break the life cycle of that particular pest or disease. So in that way, uh, cultural practices are very much helpful uh, for the management of different kind of pest and diseases. Crop rotation is one of them. Uh, you uh, All of you know that if you will uh, grow a single crop over the year uh, on a same field of land, a, a similar kind of pest and uh, disease, uh, uh, they establish in that particular uh, pocket of land and every year you will face uh, same kind of uh, problem of diseases and pests. If you will break the cycle of uh, crop by another crop, uh, those, uh, if your host will be changed, then life cycle of that particular pest or disease will be broken. So in that way, that pest can be managed by using crop rotation. So preparation of uh, some herbal uh, and organic pest control formulations, we have already uh, discussed uh, yesterday about the spani extract, fermented buttermilk, punch gabbia, and there are so many, the uh, brahmas, tagniast, uh, uh, and uh, compost tea. Uh, anyone, uh, uh, any uh, uh, important uh, uh, that formulation, uh, at least uh, two for uh, insect pest management and two to three for disease, uh, uh, disease management must be prepared in advance of startup organic crop production. So that if any time any pest attack is there, uh, we can use those formulations 
as a preventive method to control those kind of pests. So we must be uh, aware of those kind of formulations. We must know their production uh, protocol, production preparation protocol, and uh, how to use them. So control all the perennial weeds. This is very important suggestion to start the organic farming. Uh, if uh, study uh, during the lecture of uh, Sri Kamboji, he was uh, emphasizing that weeds are a very, very important hurdle to promote organic farming. If uh, you, will, uh, you are unable to properly control or manage the weed, uh, uh, your, you will be uh, fail to uh, uh, produce the crop successfully at your organic farm. So weed management is very, very important uh, hurdle in organic crop production and lot of uh, expenditure goes on uh, management of manual control of weed because herbicides are not allowed in uh, case of organic farming. So uh, at least perennial weed you can control easily. How if you are planning to start organic farming on a piece of your land in next year, you do one thing, you control all of your weeds by using non-selective herbicide in this year, first year. Uh, next year, if you will start organic farming, you will not be allowed to use any synthetic pesticide. But this year, you can kill all the perennial weeds uh, uh, at least uh, uh, by using two sprays of non-selective herbicides like uh, glyphosate, paraquat or other uh, 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 herbicides. So that in that way, if all the proper goals of those perennial weeds, uh, weeds will be destroyed this year. So on uh, next year onward, you have to remove their little bit population will remain there. They can be easily controlled by manual weeding. So, and you have to control all kinds of annual weeds before flowering. Uh, if uh, you will not allow to uh, make the seed bank of those uh, annual weeds, uh, year by year, in successive year, you will be easily uh, able to control those annual weeds also. So this is the way to control uh, manage perennial weed in organic farming. Once you will start organic farming, you will not be allowed to uh, use any kind of synthetic uh, uh, chemicals to control the weed. So in advance to start up organic, advance of the start of organic farming, you have to manage the perennial weed. Uh, by using non-selective herbicide. And maintenance of biodiversity. Uh, now we are coming uh, in detail about uh, maintenance of biodiversity at our organic farm. So uh, uh, as I have already uh, discussed that maintenance of agrobiodiversity is very important uh, to which provide the shelter and food sources for your uh, different kind of pollinators also, different kind of birds also, different kind of natural enemies also. And uh, those natural enemies, birds and many of the predators, they are very important in managing the population of insect pests, uh, different stages of insect pests in a case of your organic farming, not only in organic farming, in conventional farming also. And uh, Pollinators are also uh, motive, uh, means promoted by uh, increasing the biodiversity. And uh, these are, there are some recommendations uh, at uh, 10 acre of uh, your organic farm. If uh, you are having uh, a organic farm of 10 acre, what you have to do, you must have a boundary plantation, uh, means uh, you will be aware of buffer zone at least two to three meter buffer zone should be there uh, surrounding to your organic farm so that uh, pollutants uh, uh, through water or other uh, agencies, they should not enter uh, to your organic farm. And uh, those boundary plantations should be of any uh, tree or shrub material or annual herb, which are generally, uh, which can be used either for forage uh, material of that your livestock or they should be of some timber tree or some plantation crop. So uh, that pollutants uh, uh, will generally not uh, enter into your organic farm. And for a 10 acre of organic farm, you must have at least five to six neem tree. Neem, uh, everybody know, Ajadrasta indica. Uh, tamarind, uh, you know, one to two uh, tree must be there, uh, that tamarindus indica. 
in south india i i think all the preparations are and uh, many of our uh, preparations are uh, they are making the use of tamarind gular ficus glomerata you all of you know very uh, uh, no well known fruit uh, crop uh, that is of medicinal importance eight to ten bear this first mauritiana uh, uh, some of them are uh, important to uh, as a pest repellent uh, plant or tree and some of them are uh, very important to attract different kind of pollinators at our organic farm uh, you know gular and bear they are very important pollinator attractant if you will um, uh, see uh, bear and gular plant during their flowering season you will find lot of uh, pollinators uh, they will be moving around flowers of these plants so they are very important pollinators plant so we must have uh, at least 8 to 10 bear uh, at surrounding of our, our uh, organic farm if uh, you are having some weak boundary uh, from any side of your organic farm you can plant bear plant at that side they will uh, uh, resist the entrance of any kind of wild animals also because very uh, hard thorn uh, they are thorny plants so one to two aula imbelka apis inalis aula everybody know uh, very good uh, uh, medicinal tree its fruit is generally used in chavan pras so one to two uh, tree of aula we must have at uh, 10 acre of our organic farm one to two drum stick moringa polyphera very popular uh that that drum stick generally use uh, in uh, preparation of sambar in south india uh, so uh, we must have at least one to two uh, tree uh, it will uh, work uh, as a fodder uh, plant also and uh, for our different kind of preparations also and its leaves uh, can be used for many medicinal purpose to human being livestock also and for Uh, as a pest repellent plant and 10 to 15 different different kind of bushy plants uh, which are known for their pest repellent property and which are generally uh, easy to grow in that particular lo locality they must be there so uh, yesterday we have discussed about uh, about 21 species of tree or shrub or annual plants uh, and 10 of them Uh, we have discussed uh, to uh, use uh, them for preparation of dasparni extract a ready made insecticide or, uh, at our uh, organic farm so uh, according to the species of uh, uh, those uh, plant which are used for preparation of dasparni you have to maintain uh, their population at least 10 to 15 bushes at your uh, uh, any corner of your organic farm so uh, those uh, uh, bushes or uh, that annual plants will be used for preparation of different kind of uh, your organic preparations for control of pest and disease uh, maybe the spurni extract maybe agnias brahmastra or other kind of herbal preparations so in that way uh, you can maintain the biodiversity at your organic farm and uh, besides these plants uh, if uh, uh, you wish you can have uh, many of the fruit trees diversified uh, fruit tree either as a orchard in a corner of your organic farm or as a boundary plantation so in that way if any of uh, any one of you want to uh, develop your organic farm as a eco tourism park so you have to maintain uh, the diversity of the uh, plants crops by using a uh, high uh, diversity orchard also so visitors may enjoy different kind of fruits at your organic farm so is it clear to all the participant please uh, respond in between yes Hello? sir yes, uh, yes, any sir. any confusion at the, this level please yes, clear, uh, let me know eh? nice so, sir is it clear yes, yes sir uh -huh. if you want to develop uh, your organic farm as a eco tourist park then you must have at least uh, uh, seasonal fruits all season fruits must be there at your organic farm so that uh, tourist will be uh, motivated to uh, visit your farm so these are the pictorial representation of uh, uh, some of the important pest repellent plant of uh, important pollinator plants uh, left side you can see neem uh, its all parts uh, are used uh, for preparation of different kind of preparations and tamarind you all all of you know very well gular you know ficus glomerata 
bear gispus mauriciana uh, you know very well avla plant in middle uh, uh, of that bottom side you can see and drumstick moringa now you did lot of uh, 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 you will hear lot of uh, medicinal properties of drumstick everywhere uh, that uh, plants uh, uh, like subabul which can be used for as a nitrogen fixer uh, as well as fodder Uh, they are also uh, very important shrub which can be planted as a boundary plantation at a corner of our organic farm lemon uh, adatoda vasca lemon is a good pollinator attractant adatoda vasca very good uh, uh, pain killer plant for human being also and uh, very good pest repellent plant glycidia uh, it is very good uh, nitrogen fixer Vitex nigundo. It is generally found uh, from north to south and central India, and having very uh, good uh, pest repellent property. So, Calotropis prosera is a very toxic plant. Uh, it is used uh, as a human medicine also, as livestock medicine also, and very good toxic uh, tree against many of the insect pests. So, these plants must be ma maintained at some side of uh, or some corner of our organic farm. Datura. Uh, Uh, i have uh, told uh, in a study uh, lecture uh, for the preparation of dasparni that calotropis neem datura uh, ipomia carnia uh, they must be there in that formulation so datura very well known toxic plant to human being as well as insects also uh, it must be there at some corner of our hill ipomia carnia you know very well toxic plant to human being and animals so we uh, can apply its toxicity to prepare different kind of formulation against insect pet pest andrographis spanish culata uh, it is uh, known with the name uh, that uh, kal meghar chiraita uh, it is very good uh, uh, that uh, fever reducing plant it reduces fever in human being uh, as well as uh, it also kills different kind of internal parasites in the human being so it is a, a medicine for human also for animal also and pest repellent property very good pest repellent property we can also make uh, its use in preparation of dasparni jatropha carcass very well known uh, biofuel crop uh, uh, it uh, is also toxic uh, to many kind of pests and it can be used to prepare dasparni extract so by uh, making the use of our combination of these uh, shrub or annual uh, herb species, uh, we can maintain uh, biodiversity at our organic farm. They will be helpful in many ways. And uh, here I want to show one example, how maintenance of uh, biodiversity is important uh, uh, to enhance the population of natural enemy and natural pest control. On left side, you can see left and right side, you can see Kylotropis plant is there. Is it visible to everybody? Uh, are yes, you sir. able to see the calotropis which is infested with uh, yellow color uh, aphids? Yes, yellow sir. Yes, color sir. aphids yes, sir. are visible? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, in North India, that aphid is a very popular insect pest which attacks so many species of our crops, uh, crops particularly in the Ravi season, late Ravi season, in the month of January to uh, February and uh, sometime during October, November also. So what happens if you will have a few plants of calotropis uh, here and there at your organic farm, what will happen? It will be infested by a species of uh, aphid, which is generally not uh, uh, a pest for our crops. It is uh, a little bit host specific, Uh, to that calotropis plant. So our crop will be safe from attack of that aphid. Only calotropis will be infested. And what will happen? You know, ladybird beetle. Uh, here you can see the uh, red uh, uh, color, uh, big size insect with black dotted uh, on uh, left side and right side, you can see uh, its grubs are there. Uh, its larval stage is there. So both larval and adult stages are a very good predator for soft-bodied insect like aphid. So if you will have some plant of that calotropis in your crop cropping area, 
uh, it will attract the uh, early build up of uh, that uh, ladybird beetle because these yellow color aphids they attack little bit early uh, maybe in the month of november or december on the calotropis so they will also attract the infestation of uh, means uh, the population builder of ladybird beetle so if in the month of january or february if your crop will be atta attacked by some uh, uh, aphids which are our crop pest those uh, ladybird be uh, beetle they will move to our crop plants and they will pick up aphids early uh, population of aphids which are uh, developing as a pest to our crop so in that way uh, the maintenance of biodiversity you can uh, see here uh, how it is helpful in controlling the uh, and regulating the pest population so this is one example and there are so many examples i have also told that there is a uh, one uh, good example hover fly uh, the adults are pollinator and its uh, uh, larval stage is very good uh, predator of uh, aphids and uh, mealybugs and many other soft bodied insects so if you will maintain biodiversity at your organic farm it will be helpful in many ways to regulate the pest uh, or disease population at your organic farm so is it clear is it clear to everybody yes sir yes sir yes theek hai so uh, we can uh, the neem leucana lycosephala subabul we have already discussed glyris idia we have discussed datura ipomia we have already discussed uh, there is one uh, important suggestions uh, in uh, at your organic farm uh, though there will be a lecture by Uh, some expert from IVRI uh, that uh, Bareilly, uh, Dr. Mahesh Chandar, he will uh, tell you about uh, national standards for livestock production in case of organic farming. So in organic farming, uh, I have already told that uh, without livestock component, you cannot think about the start of organic crop production uh, because uh, due to the shortage of uh, that uh, uh, nutrient source. means dung and fym you will be unable to successfully produce the crop so if you are it is easy, if it is compulsory to rear the live stock at your organic farm you must know the organic technique for rearing the live stock and national standard also you must be aware about live stock uh, uh, production at your organic farm so uh, if you are rearing the live stock organically at your organic farm you must be knowing that many of the medicinal herbs are used as a medicine to treat different kind of disease of live stock and uh, uh, there are many indigenous technologies which are generally used to uh, cure or treat our uh, different disease of live stock also and human also so you know very well about uh, some 10 or 14 uh, 10 15 20 plants which are having the better medicinal uh, property to cure different kind of animal diseases they must be maintained at sub corn some corner of our organic farm so they will be helpful in managing live stock diseases organically so you must have uh, uh, those plants at some corner of your organic farm and uh, vitex nigondo adatodga we have already discussed that uh, this we have already discussed now coming to the tillage uh, adjustment of spacing and land configuration here i will show only one example uh, you know deep summer plowing how tillage though now a day uh, more emphasis is given on the minimum tillage uh, it uh, it is having its uh, some advantages and some disadvantages also but deep summer plowing you know it is very old age practice implied to control many kind of pest and diseases how it controls pest and diseases you know that many pest and diseases they survive through their resting structure at top layer of the soil if you will go for deep summer plowing what will happen the resting stages of insect as well as a, a pathogen causing disease to your crop they will be uh, uh, turned uh, down to the deeper layer of the soil and they will be unable to infect your crops uh, which are growing at top layer of the soil in that way and deep uh, summer plowing 
uh, the uh, resting stage of insects uh, and uh, many of the pathogens, if they will come out at top layer of soil, they will be dest destroyed by the action of intense uh, sun uh, heat, uh, intense heat by the sunshine. And some will be picked up by the uh, that flying birds also. If uh, you are plowing the uh, field at some time, you might be observing that lot of birds, they will fly around uh, behind you and they will pick up many of the uh, all kind of stage of insects. So deep summer plowing is very helpful to control different kind of pests as well uh, as diseases. Esclosia, you know, they are the resting stage of many of the group of uh, uh, fungal pathogens. They are also destroyed uh, uh, by deep summer plowing. If they will be buried deep into the soil due to action of deep summer plowing, uh, they will be unable to infect uh, the uh, roots of uh, your crop plant which are growing at top layer of soil. So in that way, uh, that uh, summer plowing is very important for disease and pest management. Weeds also. You know, generally, if any weed complete its life cycle on top surface of soil, what will happen? It will shatter or it will fall all the seeds on top layer of soil. If you will go for deep summer plowing, what will happen? Most of those weed seed will bury buried in deeper layer of soil, maybe 20 centimeter below or maybe 30 centimeter below. What will happen? those seeds, weed seeds will be unable to come out at top layer during uh, the favorable condition, conditions of germination. So in that way, summer plowing is also helpful to reduce the uh, weed, uh, weeds also. <coughs> so, uh, and uh, there are some examples uh, that uh, raised bed planting. If uh, some of you know that uh, uh, turmeric, ginger, and many kind of pulse crops. Uh, if they are planted in flat bed and there is water logging, uh, they are attacked by many kind of diseases, partic uh, particularly phytophthora diseases, pithium diseases, uh, maybe many other diseases also. If you plant those uh, crops on red bed or uh, uh, bunds also, so there will be uh, no attack by or very well uh, less attack by those kind of uh, diseases. So in case of Pythium and Phytophthora diseases, particularly in these crops, uh, you have to plant <coughs> or maintain proper drainage by planting these crops on buns, either buns or raised bed. So uh, tillage and land configuration, uh, they are very important to control different kind of pest and diseases in these ways. And these examples may vary from crop to crop and may vary from pest or pest to pest or disease to disease. And crop spacing is also very important uh, uh, practice uh, to reduce the attack of different kind of pest and diseases. Here they are at larger size to avoid the buildup of uh, congenial environment for pest and disease attack. <coughs> you know, many of the diseases of the crop in high density, which is uh, having high humidity and a favorable temperature for the attack of some pest and diseases. Uh, there is one practice that keeping uh, two feet uh, space or a leg uh, at every three to four meter. Uh, interval in case of uh, rice. It is a very uh, popular technique uh, to control uh, brown plant hopper as well as seed blight disease uh, in South India. If you will, uh, sometimes you, uh, you, you will travel uh, through, uh, by a train uh, through some coastal area of Andhra Pradesh or Tamil Nadu. Their farmers are commercially employing this technique. They are keeping uh, two feet LA in uh, between the crop at every three to four meter uh, interval and there is no loss of yield due to application of this technique even it facilitates the uh, movement within the crop for weeding also for spraying also uh, for spraying of different uh, uh, maybe pesticides or herbal formulations and it uh, uh, make a uh, uh, 
unfavorable environment for the development of many kind of pest and diseases and uh, a large plant uh, distance in case of okra okra is a uh, vegetable crop which is generally affected by uh, yellow vein mosaic virus and that virus is transmitted by white fly if you plant okra at larger distance what will happen uh, that white fly population will be less and uh, there will be a legit, uh, resultant decrease in the attack of yellow mosaic virus so according to crop or according to the pest and disease uh, uh, attacking a particular crop you can manipulate their spacing uh, in favor of plant uh, and uh, in uh, uh, against the disease or pest soil solarization uh, you know all of you know about soil solarization hello yes, sir uh, can anyone explain what is the soil solarization please uh, please tell about what you know about uh, soil solarization Sir, this is the temperature of the soil. Uh, please uh, explain one by one. I think two people have unmuted. Please uh, tell one by one. What is soil solarization? Sir, like a, it is a method to handle the soil uh, which are uh, like which would be developing from the around uh, from the soil like natural method of controlling the pests uh, there are two words one is solar heating and another is soil solarization so solar heating is simply uh, subjecting our soil uh, or any material uh, to the intense sunlight in the months where uh, we are getting uh, intense sunlight. So that is simply a solar heating. But soil solarization is a technique uh, which is employed to control soil burn diseases with the help of transplant polythene seed. So what will happen if you will cover uh, your uh, very well uh, prepared and uh, soil having good moisture content, if you will uh, cover uh, that uh, particular piece of land with very thin transparent polythene thin seed, it will act like a greenhouse. What will happen? All the sunshine which is coming during the daytime will enter into the uh, soil through that uh, transparent polythene. But uh, during the night time, uh, you know, our earth, uh, it reflects the infrared uh, red radiation uh, and it uh, go back to the environment during night time. Uh, by that way, your earth is getting cooled down. But uh, in case of soil solarization, uh, that uh, transparent polythene cover will not allow infrared radiation to go back into the environment. Uh, and your uh, soil will be, yeah, there will be a continuous uh, hot environment inside the, uh, that polythene sheet cover. So there will be a continuous uh, high temperature. It may go up to the 60 degrees Celsius and that is in the lethal range. So continuous lethal temperature uh, uh, around or above 60 de degrees Celsius for a longer period will kill all kind of uh, that uh, many of the uh, fungal pathogens, many of the bacterial pathogens and many of the nematodes which are very important pest of our crops. Uh, many of the weed seeds also will be destroyed. So, and many of the hibernating stages of insect pests will also be destroyed by the action of soil solarization. So, soil yes, solarization... I have no doubt, sir. Uh, yeah, yeah. Increase the yeah, temperature please. up to 60 degrees Celsius and what yeah. about the microorganisms in the soil? It will harm the microorganisms or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. Very important question. Uh, uh, up to 60 degrees Celsius, uh, in morning time during the lecture of uh, Dr. Ravi Sankar, sir, uh, you were discussing about uh, actinomyces. So actinomyces are a group of uh, bacteria which tolerate higher temperature up to 50-60 uh, degrees Celsius. Those kind of uh, bacteria will not be destroyed, but 
the uh, may be beneficial bacteria, may be harmful bacteria, or many any kind of microorganism, which are of mesophilic nature. Mesophilic means they are able to survive within a temperature of uh, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius. They all will be destroyed. A vacuum, microbial vacuum will be uh, there created after soil solarization. But what will, what will happen if uh, just after soil solarization, you use microbial consortia, you use trichoderma, you use uh, bacterial formulation like pseudomonas, uh, uh, that bacillus, which are uh, used to control many kind of pests and diseases of the crops they will uh, suddenly multiply in your field and they will cover most of the space uh, of your soil. And many of the saprophytic uh, uh, microbial community, they are having ability to multiply rapidly after uh, creation of vacuum after soil solarization. So uh, definitely they will be killed uh, during the uh, that lethal range of temperature during soil solarization, but later on, uh, later on, uh, that vacuum will be filled up by the rapid growth of beneficial microflora. Is it clear now? Uh, clear, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, in that way, that uh, uh, soil solarization is very effective to control many kind of uh, diseases and pests. So, more Monday. Sorry, for Monday, Monday, Kabir. So, uh, it is uh, beneficial and uh, not uh, only uh, it's control the uh, resting stages of that fungal pathogen, nematode, uh, weed seed and uh, hibernating insect stages, but it also enhance the mineralization of certain nutrients. You know, uh, a very good growth response uh, comes after soil solarization. Uh, so soil solarization uh, also enhance uh, the mineralization of nutrient into the soil. So it is beneficial in many ways. And uh, if you will uh, do soil solarization uh, for one season, uh, it's, it, it will be effective for uh, uh, three consecutive seasons. Its effect will be uh, maybe up to one or two years. So it is a very good technique. Though commercially at larger area, you cannot employ uh, soil solarization, it will be very expensive also, and it will require a lot of labor work. But at least in case of nursery, or if you are uh, growing some high value crop uh, at a limited piece of land in case of organic farming, you definitely go for soil solarization, and it should be done during the month of May and June in case of North India, but in case of South India, when uh, in the month of max, uh, when you are getting maximum intense sunshine hours, uh, then you can uh, go for soil solarization. And uh, the precautions taken that uh, the polythene seeds, which are used for soil solarization, they be uh, very thinnest one as far as possible, <coughs> and they should be transparent. Uh, why uh, we are talking about transparent polythene? Because transparent polythene, uh, allows maximum interception of sunlight into the soil. If you uh, use colored polythene sheet, uh, black color, what will happen with black, black color? That is, uh, will act like a black body. Uh, it will uh, become warm, but it, it will not allow uh, uh, the solar heat to intercept into the soil. Uh, so only transparent polythene sheets are very much effective in uh, 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 to uh, promote maximum interception of uh, uh, solar heat into the soil. Uh, generally, 25 to 30 uh, micron uh, uh, transparent polythene seeds are uh, used uh, in the soil solarization. And uh, before soil solarization, uh, you must go for tillage uh, and then uh, irrigate your field. Uh, it should be uh, uh, well uh, with the uh, field capacity and after that only you go for uh, covering the uh, covering or soil with uh, polythene seed. After uh, completion of soil solarization, maybe two or more than two months, uh, you do not go for uh, more tillage. You just sow or transplant uh, the seedling of uh, the crop of your interest 
uh, you don't go for uh, disturbing the soil much. Uh, uh, if you will go for the more disturbance of soil through tillage, uh, the uh, weed seed buried deep into the soil, they may come uh, over the surface of soil and again they can germinate. So if you will not uh, disturb the soil much uh, after soil solarization, there may be uh, a little bit, only little bit problem of weeds. So it is demanded that uh, don't go for uh, heavy tillage after soil solarization. You uh, can go just uh, for sowing or just transplanting up uh, the crop of your interest. And uh, during uh, uh, lecture of uh, Sri Kambodji, he was emphasizing that you may uh, make your soil majboot, means strong, that is suppressive soil, suppressive to heart, suppressive to different kind of pest and diseases. There are examples uh, from different parts of the world that, that a particular uh, soil of a particular pocket of a particular country, it is very much suppressive for a particular kind of pest or pathogen. Those are known as suppressive soil. <coughs> when scientific studies were conducted in uh, those suppressive uh, soil, it was found that those kind of suppressive soils, they harbor different kind of beneficial microbes, which kills uh, your uh, pathogens or insect of your crop. So if uh, you will uh, manipulate the environment of your soil, you will add a uh, different kind of organic manure, you will go for uh, green manuring, you will add oh, organic okay. amendment like cake and uh, other soil organic amendment, uh, they will enhance the population of uh, different kind of suppressive microflora, which are suppressive to different uh, stages of insect pests as well as uh, stages of uh, disease causing pathogens. So your soil uh, will become suppressive in long run, uh, long run uh, against a different kind of uh, crop pathogens and insect pests, and that will be known as suppressive soil. So to make your soil suppressive, you have to add organic amendments as recommended in case of organic farming. You must go for uh, that uh, use of green manuring at least once in a year. You add uh, maybe geomerit or uh, uh, other uh, uh, bio agents like trichoderma, pseudomonas, bacillus, metarhygium, that insect uh, uh, disease causing uh, bio, control, uh, bio control agents like uh, Bueria bacillana, metarhygium. Uh, verticillium lichani and so many bio uh, control agents of insects uh, are there and uh, nematode uh, suppressing uh, pathogens uh, like uh, arthrobacter pesilomyces you can also add into your uh, soil so uh, if you will add all these uh, bio control agents continuously you know your soil and you manipulate uh, your soil environment in favor of those bio control agents your soil will become suppressive to many kind of pest and pathogens. As you uh, know very well that many of the diseases and insects, they start uh, from uh, uh, soil uh, itself. So they will be suppressed in soil and your soil will become suppressive. So uh, these are the way to make your soil suppressive. Uh, uh, these are the uh, ways to convert your soil uh, suppressive. Uh, to pest and disease. Legume crops, you know why legume crops are uh, uh, very important to making your soils uh, suppressive to pest and disease. Actually, they contain, uh, they fix the nitrogen. They will increase the nitrogen content of soil by the biological nitrogen fixation. Uh, after uh, that uh, green manure crop is uh, incorporated into the soil, it will uh, start degrading and higher nitrogen content will enhance the population of different kind of microbes, saprophytic communities into the soil. And those saprophytic communities will suppress pathogenic microflora. So in that way, uh, that legume crops are also very important, that green manure crop, generally dhaicha and uh, sunhem, we are using, they are the green uh, legume crops. And Trichoderma pseudomonas, we have already discussed, Bivaria bassiana and Metarhygium for insect control. They all are the biocontrol agent to convert your soil suppressive to pest and disease. An application of that uh, oil cakes. 
particularly non edible oil cakes you you are having uh, in your area like neem uh, cake or maybe uh, that uh, edible oil cake like uh, uh, that uh, rape seed or mustard cake or maybe other uh, oil cakes uh, if you you will apply into your soil uh, it will act as a ready instant source of nitrogen uh, to your crop in one way and in another way it will increase enhance the microbial population of uh, your soil and it will make uh, the your soil suppressive uh, for different kind of pest and pathogens also so it is a, a beneficial application of oil cakes uh, is beneficial in many ways and multiple and mixed cropping uh, why multiple and mixed cropping earlier we have discussed uh, uh, that uh, increase biodiversity is one of the way to suppress uh, the different kind of pest and pathogens and enhance their population and to avoid the loss uh, due to a uh, attack of a particular kind of pest and disease so uh, these are the way multiple and mixed cropping are the way to increase the crop biodiversity at your organic farm so you can choose uh, uh, this system as per your interest and uh, suitability in your locality and uh, uh, here uh, you can also uh, you must use at least uh, once in a year that uh, green manure uh, by either sesbani or crotal area and uh, uh, you uh, have to uh, have one precaution that during mixed cropping or inter cropping uh, you uh, must take uh, into account that uh, your uh, main crop and mixed crop should be compatible with each other any crop should not be a suppressive or uh, having a smoothing effect or uh, other crop so these are the some precautions which we have to take during mixed cropping or multiple cropping and intercropping of marigold uh, in his lecture dr kamal khiladi sahab have already discussed that is the enemy crop for uh, several kind of nematodes so we must include at least in case of kitchen garden or in case of nursery area where we are growing uh, the nursery of our vegetable crops if you are having uh, some plants here and there of marigold it will be beneficial in suppressing nematodes in our nursery area and you know very well that uh, nematodes uh, they spread from nursery area to main field so uh, at least your nursery should be entirely free from nematodes and uh, other kind of soil borne plant pathogens <coughs> and now coming to the importance of crop rotation you know it is most important cultural practices implied uh, to check the life cycle of different kind of not only pathogens but insect pest also and weeds also uh, uh, you know uh, why we follow the crop rotation uh, you must be aware of disease triangle if uh, uh, many of you might be having the bsc ag degree uh, in bsc ag you Uh, definitely you have studied about a, uh, some plant pathology courses and those courses you must be taught about uh, disease triangle disease triangle is the combination means uh, combination of pathogen host and environment at a particular uh, crop uh, season uh, when these uh, three factor coincide with each other there definitely there will be a disease if a susceptible host is there if aggressive pathogen is there and congenial environment uh, will be there so due to coincidence of all three factors there is disease uh, what will happen if you will apply crop rotation suppose host is there host is a, a crop suppose you have grown a resistant variety what will happen that pathogen will be unable to attack your resistant host or if you plant uh, uh, a crop uh, may be little bit early or late what will happen uh, there may be chance that uh, the growing season may not be in favor of the multiplication of that particular pathogen or pest what will happen there uh, the coincidence of 
host pathogen or environment will not be there and your crop will escape from the attack of a particular pest and pathogen so major role of crop rotation is to check or to break the life cycle of pathogens insect pests as well as weeds so these are the uh, three uh, main benefits of crop rotation and that it exploit the differential in nutrient requirement of crop uh, category and thus improve the soil fertility how it improves soil fertility suppose this year this season you are growing a silo rooted crop like wheat next year next season if you will go for a deep rooted crop like some pulsage maybe urd bean moong bean what will happen the urd and moong bean are uh, that pigeon pea uh, will draw its nutrient from deeper layer of soil and top layer of soil they will form a large amount of leaf litter on top of soil so there will be a build up of soil fertility so in that way soil uh, crop rotation is very important to build your uh, that uh, uh, soil fertility soil productivity it improves soil structure through different type of root systems uh, you might be aware of uh, many crops which are having deep root system deep root uh, system what they uh, do they bore your soil with their strong action of their deep root there will be a natural clay there will be a bio pouring due to those pores there will be uh, percolation seepage of water from top layer to deeper layer of soil during the rainy season uh, there will be a interception of air from top to bottom uh, layer of soil so in that way your soil structure will be improved in favor of your crops uh, there will not be a build up of hard pan so in natural farming also why we are encouraging uh, the mixed cropping or ye silo rooted crops should be followed by a deep rooted crop because deep rooted crops they uh, uh, are generally doing bio pouring of soil they are uh, drawing their nutrients from deeper layer of soil and they are not creating uh, a stress over top layer of soil for uh, their nutrients so soil structure is also improved Uh, by the action of deep rooted crops and it also helps in breaking the life cycle of population builder of pest pathogen and weeds in agro ecosystem that is very important feature of crop rotation so crop rotation is beneficial in many ways and it is most important cultural practice employed since and seen time uh, not only in uh, organic farming in conventional farming system also so uh, uh, is it clear about crop rotation is it clear to everybody please respond yes, yes sir uh, you uh, uh, understood the uh, benefit of crop rotation yes sir so it is uh, recommended or uh, advisable that uh, you must follow crop rotation you don't uh, Uh, grow a single crop over a piece of land uh, season by season you must break the cycle of crop at a single piece of land uh, uh, in successive seasons you use a resistant variety if uh, resistant variety of a particular crop uh, are available uh, and they are resistant to a particular uh, important insect pest or important disease of your crop they must be included in our crop management package if resistant varieties are not available then we have to use tolerant variety if tolerant varieties and resistant both are not available then we have to be dependent upon other uh, non chemical uh, management practices so according to the conditions uh, we can make the use of resistant variety and if you will go to our uh, uh, website uh, you will find a network project on organic farming in that you will find a package of practices uh, of organic crop production for different uh, states in that way according to your locality you can pick up some of the recommended varieties are there uh, on the website you can choose those variety in your crop management package according to your locality and area and induce resistance and uh, i have earlier discussed uh, that even susceptible varieties can be we can make them resistant by the action of many of the uh, bio agents many of the species are the strains of trichoderma pseudomonas bacillus subtilis uh, they induce 
the inbuilt resistance uh, genes of the crops when they are applied. And if uh, once uh, the inbuilt uh, resistant genes are uh, activated by the action of these biogens, even susceptible variety behave like resistance. So if you'll uh, make the massive use of these biogens, uh, there may be chance that uh, even uh, your susceptible variety may behave like resistance and will not get uh, them infected by different kind of pests or pathogens. And treatment of seed and planting material. You know very well that uh, many of our uh, disease and pest, uh, even some insects, they attack our crop through seeds only. Many of the diseases which we purchase seeds from some outside sources, uh, many of the diseases which are not uh, uh, prevalent to our area, they uh, may come to our field through seed or planting material. And uh, in uh, lecture of Kamal Khiladi Sahab, it was very well elaborated that many of the nematode diseases, they uh, spread uh, through planting material only. Uh, earlier, I have discussed that uh, you must maintain uh, many of the uh, shrub and many of the pest repellent plant at your uh, uh, organic farm. And you are also using many of the seedling or planting material, uh, you purchase them from outside. You must be very, very careful in using those kind of uh, planting materials which are purchased from outside. They may be having nematode and once nematode will enter into your field and if you are not taking care, there may be chances that a particular kind of nematode may get established into your organic farm and then once it will establish, uh, it will be very difficult or impossible to control. So you have to be very cautious in using those planting material which are coming with a piece of soil or uh, they are, uh, if they are, uh, they are a possibility uh, that they are infested by a particular nematode or particular stage of insects. So, so you must be careful about that. So uh, for to check the spread of these kind of pathogens, there are different seed uh, treatment or planting material treatment methods. So we must apply <coughs> those seed or planting material treatment to, to check the spread of those diseases which are generally uh, <coughs> initiated by through seed. <coughs> so hot uh, water treatment is one of them. Uh, so using this method, uh, seed bulb sets, nursery stocks can be <coughs> treated with hot water treatment and uh, extreme care should be taken because a single degree increase in temperature can kill your planting material or if you will <coughs> not treat them up to a desired temperature, the pathogen will remain alive. So generally treatment at 52 to 54 degrees Celsius for a 25 to 30 minutes generally eliminates most of the uh, plant pathogens uh, including fungal pathogen, bacterial phytoplasma and viral pathogens. So you have to be very careful about uh, the hot water treatment of planting material. And uh, uh, paddy is very, you know, very important crop uh, of our uh, uh, country. Uh, and uh, many of the pathogens uh, like uh, bacterial blight, uh, leaf spot, and uh, uh, even seed blight, they uh, initiated through seed. So treatment of uh, rice seeds, uh, before growing the nursery uh, at 54 degrees Celsius for about 25 to 30 minutes uh, can eliminate most of the pathogens uh, uh, present inside the uh, rice seed. So, but extreme care should be taken during treatment. Why I am telling about hot water treatment? Because uh, in organic farming, uh, you don't have uh, option of treating your seed through the help of fungicides or bactericides, synthetic fungicides. So this technique can be used. <coughs> seed treatment with uh, biocontrol agents. Many of the biocontrol agents like trichoderma, pseudomonas, uh, they can be used uh, to suppress uh, many kind of uh, your uh, disease uh, of your crop. So uh, generally 10 gram of formulation per kg of seed is taken. Uh, for the seed treatment and at same rate you can go for 
uh, seedling treatments also. Seed bio-priming, I have already discussed in my presentation yesterday that after uh, treating with biocontrol agent, uh, you prefer uh, to treat the seeds uh, during evening time. Uh, you uh, incubate the seeds uh, or shade dry them during whole night. Uh, what will happen during this time that uh, uh, the propagules of your biocontrol agent uh, they will get germinated during night time and they will be easily established after uh, sowing up the seed and they will be uh, effectively controlling the heat during the germination or early stages of the crop. So bio priming, if you are going for the uh, seed treatment with bio control agent, you must uh, use bio priming technique. Then uh, Bija Amrit in natural farming, Bija Amrit uh, is one of the options to treat the seed. Uh, the technique uh, of preparation of Bija Amrit and how to treat seed, I have uh, already discussed in detail. Other seed treatment uh, method, maybe you can go for seed treatment with Panchagabya also. Uh, even Dasparni extract can be used. Uh, uh, you uh, must uh, uh, go for seed treatment uh, with rhizobium, azotobacter, and azospirillum for uh, enhancing biological nitro nitrogen fixation. Depending upon the crop, you can choose the kind of uh, biocontrol agent. Uh, you can uh, uh, treat your seed with pseudomonas fluorescence stains, which are having phosphate solubilizing activity. So any kind of uh, uh, bioagent or microbial formulation which is having nutrient solubilizing or nutrient mineralizing activity, uh, it can be also used uh, for the city. Then mechanical method of pest control. Uh, bird perching is one of them. There are so many uh, methods. So if you will install a T-type of uh, bird perching in your field, or simply you put a dried branch of a, uh, 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 that tree uh, in your field, what will happen? Many of the uh, predative bird, uh, they will come uh, and sit on uh, those branches and uh, they will pick up different stages of uh, uh, insects uh, around uh, those branches, those, those lying branches. So bird perching uh, is one technique by which uh, you can uh, uh, enhance uh, the, bi the biological control into your organic farm, but there may be chance uh, that during uh, uh, maturity stage of your crop, uh, these uh, purchase may act uh, as a shelter uh, for that uh, parasitic birds which come and pick up our uh, ready produce. So during that time, uh, you can remove those bird purchase. During uh, crop growth and up to the flowering fruiting, you allow these purchase and during uh, uh, that ready fruit uh, season or ready grain season, you remove these purchase. Uh, and uh, you can uh, uh, have uh, uh, the option to install different kind of uh, arrangement to increase the population of spiders. You know, in rice uh, crop, spiders are very important uh, predators uh, to control different kind of uh, pests in our rice crop. If their population will be increased by, by any technique, any arrangement, it will be very beneficial to control different kind of insect pests. Light traps are uh, and pheromone traps. If they are available, you must uh, include them in your crop protection uh, package in organic farming. And uh, many of the light traps and pheromone traps are commercially available. And fruit fly trap are one of them, uh, which are generally used to control fruit fly in case of many of the orchard crops, as well as in case of uh, that cucurbitaceous, uh, cucurbitaceous uh, vegetables. Uh, we have already discussed uh, if uh, you want to have a, a good quality produce and a maximum yield in organic farming, uh, you have to have a sound weed management program. And uh, weeds not uh, only compete with crops for nutrient space uh, and water and other resources, but they also have different kind of pests and pathogens. So during crop season, uh, those pathogens are worrying on uh, that uh, weeds and uh, uh, different kind of alternative weeds. They will move from uh, weed infested or inf infected weed to your crop and uh, 
they make aaj epidemic of that particular uh, crop paste rdg in your crop so clean cultivation and proper weed management uh, they are very necessary steps in organic farming and state stale seed bed is one of the technique to control effectively control uh, weeds in uh, your organic farming stale seed uh, bed is nothing but uh, you have to give a if uh, you are in irrigated uh, area you have to provide a pre sowing irrigation uh, just uh, 20 to 30 days uh, before sowing what will happen most of the weeds uh, seed will get germinated and uh, you have to destroy those germinating seed by the action of uh, some uh, silo tillage and you go uh, thereafter you go for sowing of your main crop so in that way uh, the seed uh, bank lying in the, your soil will be exhausted uh, and if you will uh, sow the crop after a stale uh, seed bed uh, you will face less problem of weed so a stale seed bed is a very good technique to control weed in organic farming and you have to be careful about uh, many of the weeds which are uh, which generally spread through organic manures like uh, compost and far, farm yard manure you know that trianthema porcula castrum and amaranthus verdis they are the some weeds if you will uh, feed your animal with the uh, 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 fodder or uh, uh, having these weeds weed seeds uh, they will spread to Uh, dung uh, and they will ultimately come to yfym and they uh, remain survive uh, uh, even after passing through the uh, gut of uh, those uh, live stock uh, and they spread through organic manure so uh, you have to be very careful if you are feeding your animal with uh, grasses or different kind of weeds those weeds should be free from weed seeds so in that way your uh, dung uh, animal dung and fy well uh, fym will not be having seeds uh, then uh, they will be unable to spread to fym so this uh, care should always be taken uh, into account in organic farming and by bi- balanced crop uh, nutrition uh, it is very well known that if your uh, crop is uh, healthy it is uh, having all kind of essential nutrient inside uh, it in balanced quantity Uh, that uh, it will be less affected by uh, pest and pathogens so uh, i have already discussed that uh, nitrogen management is a very essential step in organic farming you have to uh, properly nourish your crop with a proper dose of nitrogen through different kind of sources uh, so your crop will be healthy and uh, it will be less affected by Uh, different uh, uh, pathogens as uh, well as insect pests and uh, how to control pest and disease in standing crop so yesterday we have discussed uh, about different kind of formulations for pest and disease management in organic farming uh, you can go to prepare those preparation uh, and you can Uh, according to the your crop according to your locality and according to the pest and disease spectrum you can make the use of those uh, formulation organic or herbal preparation to manage pest and diseases at your organic farm so biological alternative that massive release of predator parasite and parasitoid uh, in case of rice and uh, uh, the sugar cane crop uh, uh, even a uh, four to five releases of that uh, parasitoid uh, that is uh, uh, trichogramma uh, can uh, completely check the development of many of the leftover uh, cran pests so uh, if you will properly make the use of uh, these biocontrol agents uh, uh, they will be very helpful in managing different kind of insect pests uh, of your organic farm uh, use of bio pesticides we have already discussed uh, you can uh, make the use of uh, trichoderma pseudomonas they are very helpful in uh, managing uh, different kind of disease at our uh, of your organic crop and bivaria baciana metarhizium they are very well known biogens for control of uh, uh, different kind of insect pests so massive release of uh, bivaria baciana can be done to control different kind of insect pests in your organic farm uh, different type of uh, uh, that viral bio pesticides Uh, like yeah cnpv or uh, that uh, uh, spodoptera litura slnpv uh, you can uh, make their use to control this particular pest uh, at your organic farm 
So name formulations we have already discussed all kind of uh, formulation like Nimastra, Brahmastra, uh, the chili garlic extract, uh, and in Dasparni, Nim is an integral uh, ingredient. So uh, uh, and uh, even uh, Nim Elan in Nimastra, Nim Elan can be used to uh, prepare a preparation to control different kind of insect pest at your organic farm. So different kind of neem formulations can be used to control different kind of insect pest at, uh, of your organic crop. Neem seed kernel extract, we have already uh, given detailed explanation about that. Chili garlic extract, uh, we have already discussed their preparation and use protocol. Cow urine, uh, I have uh, told uh, during my initial lecture, not a single drop of livestock urine should go waste at your organic farm because it contains a lot of nutrients, not only nitrogen, but it has very uh, big amount of potassium also, many of the growth factors also, many of the uh, micronutrients also. And if you will make the proper use of uh, cow urine or uh, buffalo urine or other livestock urine, uh, in your crop, you will be able to manage the uh, required nitrogen of your crop and uh, uh, use of application of uh, urine and spray of urine in standing crop also have uh, the capacity to suppress different kind of pest and diseases in standing crop. So it is helpful in many ways to check and pest and diseases and as well as nourish your crop. So. Uh, uh, you have to have arrangement for the collection of your live stock urine and they are used in either in standing crop or to prepare different kind of preparation and uh, uh, for the management of soil fertility. So uh, uh, you have to take care that uh, not a single drop of live stock urine should go waste. Fermented card water, I have already discussed how to prepare, how to make its use. The Sparni extract, I have given detailed description of its preparation and use in our crop. So these are the some other preparations. Broad spectrum formulation, it is, it is something like the Sparni extract. Compost tea is another formulation. It is nothing but a, a blend of different kind of fermenting uh, or composting substrate. Uh, uh, and it is a cold preparation. Uh, it is generally uh, prepared within uh, two weeks. Uh, uh, and uh, like with trichoderma and pseudomonas, uh, it gives uh, some protection against many kind of disease in your crops, uh, maybe archer crops or uh, maybe in vegetable crops, maybe in commercial crops. This is the production protocol for uh, that uh, compost tea. Uh, fill a bucket up, uh, one, uh, one third of pull up, uh, uh, quality finished compost from at least uh, three to four sites. So there uh, may be, uh, it will work like a microbial consortia. Add water to uh, top of the bucket uh, and uh, then uh, let the mix up ferment for three to four days, uh, stir it well. And uh, uh, after uh, one week, uh, at least one week, uh, you filter the mixture uh, with uh, cheese cloth or with a double layer uh, cotton cloth and uh, uh, that dilute the mixture uh, in the ratio of 10 is to 1. And that mixture can be used as a compost tea uh, on your orchard cup, in your, on your pot, uh, and you can go for spraying of this mixture. And it will be helpful <coughs> in suppressing many kind of pest and disease at your organ. Uh, here, it can be applied for potted plants around root system as a foliage spray. And these are the some uh, uh, results of uh, our experiments at our farm. When uh, you have, uh, we have used uh, that cow urine uh, in combination with compost tea, uh, that minimum uh, uh, effect of late blight disease was uh, found in case of potato. So uh, compost tea is a very good formulation. Uh, when uh, it will be used in combination with trichoderma, pseudomonas, or uh, cow urine, it will be effective to control different kind of diseases, foliar disease of your crop. So we have already discussed about panchagabya and other preparations. So now uh, the uh, uh, today 
uh, this uh, is what uh, which i wanted to share with all of you so now the session is open for discussion if uh, you are having any query or any suggestions 